RV life has ruined me. Find out why I don't think I could live in a house ever again. Welcome to the channel. I'm Liz. In this video, I'm going to share with you how my four and a half years of full-time RV life have changed me to the core so much that I don't think I could ever live in a house again. But first, I want to thank you for moving me closer to 100,000 subscribers because that's my goal. So thank you for helping me get a little bit closer each day. So some years before I became a full-time RVer, my husband and I were looking for a house and we were so excited. We found this brick house that we were buying on an acre and we were over the moon because it had the one thing that we really wanted and that was a sun porch. We both just imagined we'd be sitting out there having breakfast every day and just enjoying our fenced backyard and enjoying life and then we moved in. What we didn't know was that our yard was against a street that was used as a shortcut for people getting to and from work and also funnel people in to at least two schools that were behind our neighborhood. The traffic was relentless. We found that we could not enjoy our sun porch. This was a big problem. I mean, we even put up a big fence, but because we were up on a hill, we were not able to block out the noise. I mean, there was no fixing that. And I think that's the difference between RV life and house life. Yes, I'm gonna have bad neighbors occasionally when I'm camping or people with barky dogs or loud radios. I can't begin to explain to you the freedom I feel knowing that my home's on wheels. Things that were big problems when I lived in a house are just like no problem at all out here on the road. I didn't wanna go any further without showing you where I am right now. I am in Quartzsite, Arizona, in the Arizona desert on BLM land. In fact, there's over 11,000 acres here and my campsite's probably an acre. I'm boondocking so I have to supply my own power but this BLM land has water available and a dump station so it's $40 for two weeks. If you want to do this you will of course need to have a generator or solar hopefully both. It's great to be out here it's so quiet and peaceful I can see the stars at night it is really a wonderful experience. Now you can find sites like this by using my favorite app which is RV Trip Wizard. You can filter it. So if you want to just stay on BLM land or maybe national parks, national forests, you can put that in the filter. Or if you want to stay at KOA's Thousand Trails, you can filter for that too in your search. You just put in where you want to go and the types of campgrounds that you're looking for will show up. You can even filter by dollar amount. So if you want to stay on the low end of the budget, you can do that and it just makes it so easy. Until I discovered RV Trip Wizard, I was doing all the planning myself and I turned it into a job. RV Trip Wizard definitely makes it easy and it has route planning features too. So you can enter in the height of your rig and it will get you from point to point. I really love this app and if you're interested, check it out, but don't pay full price. I can get you 25% off, plus there's a free seven day trial. Back when I had a house, I was really focused on constantly accumulating things for it. Like maybe finding the perfect thing for the wall or for the coffee table or a new coffee table. In fact, every store I went into, I was always having my antennas up looking for something to get for the house. But if you think about your life, life, the best moments, the sweetness of life, don't come from stuff. They come from experiences. And when you look back at all the moments, it's about, it's about time with family and friends or out exploring or seeing something new. And that is the gift of RV life is I'm no longer focused on stuff and accumulating. I'm focused on experiences and really living life to the fullest. In fact, when I go to Costco now, I laugh out loud. I'm like, oh my goodness, all this stuff I don't want or need. And when you think about the things that you have, they all require time to maintain, to clean, to take care of. I'm free of all that. And I really love not being weighed down by stuff and having my focus on what's more important, which is experiences. A couple winters ago, I stayed in a campground in Sebastian, which is on the east coast of Florida. And I had a goal since I started RV life, and that was to see either a sunrise or a sunset every day, if not both. So I was getting up kind of early. With it being winter, the sun wasn't getting up so early. So I'd be out at the boat dock at 7 a.m., sitting in a boathouse, watching the pelicans fly by and watching these amazing sunrises. I just couldn't believe how beautiful they were watching the sun come up 
over the water. Well, one day I talked to the manager and I was like, wow, these sunrises are amazing. And she said, oh yeah, when we moved down here six years ago, we used to watch every one. They really are awesome. It's now been a couple years since we've seen one. And I was like, oh my gosh, isn't that so true? If we stay in a place long enough, we start to take it for granted and we stop seeing it. And that's another gift in RV life. Everything's new, I savor everything, I don't know when I'm gonna be back in that place again. So it's always something that I see with fresh eyes. I have to say, when I lived in my hometown, I lived in a bubble. My friends looked like me, they thought like me, they believed like me, and they voted like me. And that's pretty typical for a lot of people. If you live in, in the same area, you tend to attract people that are just like you. Well, the thing about camping life is it forces you to meet people who aren't like you. They may be wildly different from you on the economic scale, they think differently, believe differently, and vote differently. And here's the thing, the news wants us to believe that there's this great divide and that it's us against them, but that is not the reality in the camping world. We become friends with everyone. We meet all kinds of different people around the campfire, and this is how we unite. Some of the dearest friends that I have made since being on the road, the closest friends, friends that are like family to me, they have different beliefs than me, different political views than me, and yet we're still able to love one another. That, I think, is one of the absolute beautiful things about RV life. My mom and I used to go on cruises a lot together. We did five, six, or seven cruises, and we would meet people that were mega cruisers that had been on like maybe 20 cruises. And they always told us the same thing. When they booked a cruise, they didn't even bother to look at the ports of call. They just loved the lifestyle. And I have to say, the longer I do this life, the less I'm attached to itinerary. I'm more about enjoying the lifestyle and being out here and seeing the gift in where I am. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're like, Liz, you can't do RV life forever. You need to have an exit plan. And that's exactly right. I do have an exit plan, but it does not involve a house. Do you know it took me 26 years of dreaming about full-time RV life until I finally was able to get out here. If this life is calling you, absolutely come out here. There are a lot of people that don't get to live their dreams. I feel so fortunate that I'm able to live mine. And if you wanna come out here, do it because life is short. If you want more, if you wanna connect with me personally or learn some things about me that I would never put on YouTube, then join the Patreon community. I also give sneak peeks as to what video I'm working on. And yes, I do share some news there that's never gonna be on YouTube. So find me on Patreon. And if you've enjoyed this video please like subscribe and share and let me know what you love about RV life and if you would give up a house to come out here and live this life as always these are exciting times to push past fear build confidence and live amazing